you know, that's been something that I've been trying to get at my entire career, is to see how to compare a, a total hip replacement to a hip resurfacing, because these are both really great operations. Uh, in fact, a total hip was defined by Lancet, our, one of our world famous journals, as the operation of the century. That was last century, of course, but uh, it was still really great. It's, and it's really s consistently second only to a cataract procedure as a surgical endeavor. It's really great. So how can you compare something uh, without a ceiling effect? If you have one really great operation, how do you compare it to another in a meaningful way? And I, people have tried different things. The most important paper that uh, I've written, I, th I think, is the one I'm doing right now. And it's, it's one I could only do pretty late uh, into practice where you have a lot of long-term follow-up. I've finally been able to get a statistically significant group of patients who have one of each type of hip. They have a total hip in one of their hips and they have a hip resurfacing in their other hip for various different reasons. And they have exactly the same per socket essentially, this actually the same everything, the same surgeon did their case the same way, the same person. It's all the variables control best way we can. And so we've uh, got a um, researcher who doesn't know what operation the patients had. And I asked, the patients were told not to disclose that. As they were interviewed, examined, and then other, otherwise just generate the necessary data to see what, what bubbles up. Well, it's, it's pretty interesting. We had some of the patients, that they really didn't have much of a preference between the two. They, they, they looked pretty similar um, to them. But that was only about 9%. Said, you know, they're, they're kind of identical. And there were some that thought the hip replacement was better. Um, that was only, however, about six or so percent thought their hip replacement. And admittedly, all these people had a good hip on each side. If one was bad, they were excluded because it wasn't valid anymore. But all the others said the hip resurfacing uh, hip was, of their two, the better hip to have. It wasn't a smaller incision. It, it, sometimes they said, would say, though, the recovery was easier. We asked them, you know, why was that? And the most prevalent reason they would give was they could just do more with that hip compared to their other hip. In the end, that was the overwhelming response. Uh, and they would say it felt more natural. It, it felt stronger. It, it felt more like their natural hip had been before it became arthritic. They have a variety of ways of describing that. When they went to use it, it was a pretty consistent theme. If they had a, a preference in one side to the other, which people do just like they have one hand is dominant to another, that would change to the resurfaced side. And they were equally distributed, whether they're right or left um, over time. So of our 270 patients with a, a matched bilateral paired series, uh, it, I think that was the most compelling th thing for me t to hear. I, any other way of comparing it is, is pretty hard to do when people have, have tried. And, uh, so, so I, Probably that's answered it for me and uh, supports probably the ongoing performance of hip resurfacing, which it's harder to do and uh, it's more troublesome in some ways to, to, to take on. It's a great uh, thrill in a number of ways to have uh, Dr. Fred Beagle as a, a patient because that's been the, this has been the hardest uh, thing. I, I don't know that I need recognition. I have, I'm happy for the patients that come to me and tell me that they uh, heard about me in some way, that they come and I get to treat them. That's a great uh, gift. Um, I've had a, um, a number of physicians and a good many orthopedic surgeons, and 36 in my career, which is now starting year 35, so pretty much every year, or sometimes one year I had, uh, I think, three of the best uh, year on that, and it, o only two others have ever done a hip resurfacing, and, and only Dr. Beagle has been willing to kind of go public with all this. 34 of the 36 um, do not offer hip resurfacing operations to their patients. When it came time for their hip, they saw value in it, but for different reasons, uh, for their patients, they, they didn't as much. And 
there was uh, one time I was speaking at a program and, and uh, one of the other speakers there w turned out to be one of my patients and he, uh, he was on the side of the debate, as it often comes up, suggesting that um, an anterior total hip was a far better operation than a hip resurfacing, and that's what he recommends to all his patients. And, you know, naturally, confidentiality being what it is, I just sat there and listened to him politely, and he had a very nice presentation. And so if I had anything missing as far as um, feeling good about what I do, Fred Beagle's filled that hole in pretty well by willing to acknowledge that he, ha he sees a role for hip resurfacing, say that he's had it now twice, and uh, he's uh, advancing the, the cause of, of what we're doing by uh, doing this and saying that he's done it and being willing to, to you know, kind of give up on a little of his privacy. It's not an easy thing to do.